Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we'll be looking into a very important and interesting clustering algorithm which is widely used in big data analytics. And the algorithm is Cure algorithm. Now this is a clustering algorithm. So before moving to this particular algorithm, first we'll see what clustering means. So clustering means grouping the data based on the similarities. That means in big data, you will be getting a huge amount of data and you can group those data based on their similarities, which is nothing but the way in which they behave. This concept is widely used in customer segmentation problems or fraud detection. Now, as I have depicted the name of similarities, now what is it? Similarity is nothing but it is a distance measure in which we calculate the distance between two points and based on that we group them. Now, the distance measure can be of different types. It can be Euclidean, Jacquard, cosine similarity or it can be any other distance measure. Cure algorithm is purely based on Euclidean distance measure. So now here we have just taken an example. Here we have some data points and in these data points we are supposed to create clusters. Now how cluster will look like? It is nothing but group of data points which are closer to each other and which behaves similar. So you can see that we have created three different clusters based on the distance between them. So you can see that data points in cluster 1 is very much far away from every single data point in cluster 2. Hence we have created different clusters for them. Now you can see that some of the data points are not at all a part of any of the cluster. So those data points will be called as outliers. Outliers are those data points which behaves abnormally when compared to other data points which are present inside the cluster. Hence, they are far away from those. So I hope the concept of clustering and an overview of it is clear to you all. Now let's move on to the types of clustering that we are supposed to do for learning this cure algorithm. So the first type of clustering is partitioning clustering. So the name itself tells you that we are going to partition the clusters. So we'll first start with one big cluster. This big cluster will cover every single data point in the entire data set. And once we create this big cluster, we are supposed to divide it slowly and steadily until the specified number of clusters are achieved. Now we'll see an example through which you will be clear with this particular concept. So as an example, let's consider this particular data points. Now partitioning clustering says that we have to take every single data point in the data set in the big cluster, which is the initial cluster. Then we need to continuously divide it in such a manner that the specified number of clusters are achieved. For example, you can see here that we have divided this entire big cluster into three different clusters based on the similarities between them. Now this backend process of finding the similarities goes continuously until specified number of clusters are made. So I hope this partitioning clustering overview is clear to you all. Now let's move on to another type of very important clustering algorithm which is hierarchical clustering. So here you can see that it starts with a single data point level cluster. Now this is exactly opposite of the partitioning cluster. There we were starting with a very big cluster covering entire set of data points. But here we are going to start with a single data point as one cluster and then we are going to go with the process of merging. Now again this merging concept will take place only with the help of the similarity measures. We will constantly find the distance between two different data points or a cluster and a data point and based on the similarity threshold if they satisfy then we will make it as a part of the cluster. So you can see here we have these particular set of data points. And after applying the hierarchical clustering method, we have got these particular clusters. Now let's say we consider this particular data point as the starting point. Now we'll calculate the distance between the neighborhood points and we'll then club them if they are satisfying the similarity condition. And finally it goes on and on. And finally we'll be getting those clusters which we are in need of by the end of the process. So just remember that this starts with a single data point level and it will use the concept of merging 
based on the distance between itself and the data point which is in its neighborhood and if the condition satisfies then it will merge with it and finally this process will continuously go on and specified number of clusters will get created now so far we have seen these two types of algorithms that is partitioning and hierarchical clustering but there were some drawbacks with these algorithms because these algorithms were not suitable for big data hence cure algorithm came into picture so first let me give you an overview of what cure algorithm means so the name cure stands for clustering using representatives c stands for clustering u stands for using and re stands for representatives so this particular algorithm is totally based on a new concept which is representatives now as i said traditional methods of clustering which were partitioning and hierarchical clustering were not suitable for larger data sets hence this cure algorithm is specially designed to work efficiently on larger data sets which uses the concept of representatives so now the next point says that it uses a collection of representative points to represent the cluster so basically it is a new approach where rather than finding the centroid we find the representative points and based on those representative points we try to create clusters now this cure algorithm in short is a combination of two different approaches which are the centroid based approach and the all point extreme approach that gives rise to a new approach which is the representatives approach now the next speciality of cure algorithm is that it is capable of detecting the clusters of any shape now if you look at the previous example that we have seen in partitioning as well as the hierarchical clustering approaches there we were able to see clusters of only spherical shape but this cure algorithm will be able to find out the clusters of any shape it can be s shaped or it can be overlapping shape and the major speciality of this algorithm is that it detects the outliers automatically as well as it removes it that means it will be able to find out which data point is basically behaving abnormally and it will not make it as a part of any of the cluster so we don't have to separately find out the outliers for this i hope the overview of cure algorithm is clear to you all now let's move on to this architecture of cure algorithm so basically what we want we want to convert the data into clusters so first the data will be drawn into random samples that means first we'll randomly generate sample based on the memory that is present inside the main memory now once we draw the different samples that means only a set of data point in a cluster now once we are done with it we'll partition the sample now this partitioning will again be made randomly now once this partitions are created we will partially cluster them that means we are not going to cluster it permanently because the next stage is very much important which is finding the outliers so before finding the outliers we'll just partially partition it in the next stage we'll try to detect the outlier and we'll eliminate those outlier from the entire data point once the outliers are eliminated then we'll cluster the partially created partitions that we have created before now here in this particular case we'll cluster them permanently now after clustering the last stage is to label the data on the disk now this labels will nothing but the names which are going to represent that particular cluster and once these labels are created our final clusters will be created and will be stored in the main memory so i hope you understood the entire process this is a six stepped process where the data is getting converted into cluster with the help of the cure architecture if you have any doubt in this particular cure architecture you can put it in the comment section now we are done with this cure architecture and the cure algorithm will now be more clear with the example that we are going to see now so in this particular example we'll also see the cure algorithm step by step so let's consider these data points you can see there are huge amount of data points though these data points are not that huge that a big data has but for now just consider this now according to the cure algorithm it goes in two passes in the first pass we need to pick random samples that fit in the main memory and we need to cluster them so we need to randomly pick the data points and we need to store it in the samples and once they are stored we need to cluster them now let's see how we can do it so you can see i have these particular data points now i'm going to randomly draw the samples so let's create a sample here then let's create sample here then let me draw some samples at this particular portion also so here also we'll draw one more sample these samples i have drawn randomly 
you can draw as many number of samples as you want but try to make it lesser in number so now according to the algorithm we are done with the first step now now once we are done with the samples we need to move to the next step which is nothing but choose c scattered points in each cluster so c here is the number of scattered points that are present in each cluster that we have created earlier in the first point let's take c equals to 4 so by considering the same example now let's consider this particular cluster and we have to consider four scattered points that means the scattered points are those points which are far away from each other at the extreme position so you can see we have chosen this so i hope the second step is also clear now once we have chosen this scattered points next we are supposed to shrunk these scattered points towards the centroid in a fraction of alpha where alpha is ranging from 0 to 1. Generally the fraction is 20%. Now the meaning of this particular step is that we have to shrunk that means we have to bring closer these scattered points towards the centroid. Let's say we have centroid at this particular location. Now we have to bring all these data points closer by a fraction of alpha towards the centroid. Now as you know that data points cannot be moved. So you just have to imagine that these data points are getting shrunk towards the center and you just have to calculate the distance between the position where it has got shrunk by a fraction of alpha and the position of the centroid which is located in that particular cluster. So I hope you have understood what is the minimum distance over here. It is the distance between the centroid position and each representative data point position after shrinking it by a fraction of alpha. This distance will be called as D minimum. And once you find the D minimum, you have to use this D minimum distance for a cluster merging approach by considering these data points as representatives of this cluster. So now these data points that we have chosen as scattered data points will now be called as the representatives of the cluster. And the distance that we have calculated, which is the D min, we have to use the D min distance as a condition for merging the data points into the cluster. So let's consider this particular data point and let's try to calculate the distance between this representative point and the data points that are in neighborhood of this particular representative point. If the distance is lesser than or equal to the D minimum distance, then we have to club them into this particular cluster. Now you can see the distance was satisfying the condition. Hence, it has got clubbed into this particular cluster. Now that was all for the pass one. Now inside the pass 2, we have to choose one of the data points that have now got merged into the existing cluster as a representative of the new cluster that has got created. So if you remember, three data points were clubbed into the cluster earlier. So one of these three data points will now be a representative of the entire cluster that is created. Now this process will continue until a particular condition is met. That means this will stop when target number of clusters that is k number of clusters is achieved from the entire data set. So this is the algorithm of clustering using representatives. It goes in two passes. I hope the algorithm is clear. Now let's try to visualize this algorithm and see how the entire data points will be utilized to form clusters using the cure algorithm approach. So, so far we have reached till this point where we have merged three data points into the cluster. Now, as you can see, one of these three data points will now be called as a representative of that particular cluster. Let me show you the entire process again by considering now this particular sample. So in this sample, we have to choose four scattered points. These scattered points are nothing but the representative points. Now, once we choose them, we'll have to calculate the d minimum distance of this particular cluster i hope now you know how to calculate the d minimum distance of every single sample now using that d minimum distance as a threshold we'll have to check for this particular representative points the neighborhood points which are not a part of the cluster whether the distance between this representative point and these neighborhood points are lesser than the d minimum threshold then we can club this new data points into the existing cluster and once we do that we'll have to consider one of the data point as a representative point which has got newly introduced into the existing cluster so now i hope the process is clear i have explained you the process two times now this process will continue for this particular section and finally we'll be having these two clusters 
and now you can see we have these two big clusters now so far we have seen the merging of a cluster and a data point now we'll see the merging of two different clusters how it takes place so if you want to merge two different clusters we'll have to calculate the distance between the representative points of each cluster now if we consider these two data points as the representative points we'll have to calculate the distance between them if the distance is lesser than the threshold value then these two clusters can be merged into a single big clusters so here the threshold satisfies and hence we can club these two clusters into a single big cluster which will accommodate all the data points of these two clusters now you can see that the cluster that is formed is not of a spherical shape so hence proved that your algorithm supports clusters of any shape similarly for the other random samples we'll try to apply the same process of your algorithm and finally we'll be having these three clusters with the four representative points in each of the clusters which are always scattered to the utmost distance from every single other representative data so now you can see from the entire data set we have created these three clusters now the next step is to label these clusters so that it can be stored in the memory with a representative name here we have given the cluster names as a b and c so now i hope that creating clusters using your algorithm is clear to you all now you can notice one thing that we are now left with some of the data points which are not even a part of a single cluster so these data points are nothing but outliers outliers are those data points which behaves abnormally when compared to other data points which are a part of the clusters as you can also notice one thing that each of these outliers are very much far away from every single cluster so i hope the entire example is clear to you all now we'll see a summarized diagram of the cure algorithm which will clear all the concept so let's consider these two data points which are inside the cluster and we'll now check whether the data points are nearest to each other which means if it satisfies the distance minimum threshold condition if it satisfies then we'll simply merge these two data points and we can club this into a a single big cluster which will accommodate these two data points now considering this particular cluster and a new data point inside the data set if the distance between the representatives of the cluster and this new data point is nearest that is if it satisfies the minimum threshold condition then we'll simply merge the cluster and the data point and finally we'll create a new big cluster so i hope the process is clear two data points if they are nearest to each other we can merge it one cluster with a single data point if they are nearest to each other we can merge it so i hope this summarized diagram must have cleared all your doubt now let's move to the advantages of your algorithm first advantage is that it gives the accurate results it adjusts perfectly to non spherical shapes of the clusters which we have seen in the previous example also in short clusters of any shape are supported the next advantage is that it is efficient for larger data sets for which it has got introduced and therefore in big data it is widely used the next advantage of your algorithm is that it is less sensitive to outliers it is going to automatically detect the presence of outliers and it is also going to remove it so that only significant data points can be a part of the cluster and finally the biggest advantage of your algorithm is that it takes very less time complexity when compared to the other algorithms that were traditionally used so the time complexity of your algorithm when it comes to larger data set is o of n square log n and when it comes to data set with small dimensionality the time complexity is o of n square and the space complexity of both the cases is o of n which is very less compared to the other algorithm so i hope the entire concept of cure algorithm with its example architecture advantages and summarized diagram is clear to you all if you guys have any single doubt then you can straight away post it in the comment section and it has been observed that only 4% of my viewers subscribes to my channel 
after only watching the videos please guys subscribe to my channel because subscription is very much important and it motivates me a lot to create more interesting and fruitful videos